In this video, we'll demonstrate the influence of flowing water on effective stress. It takes us to the heart of the challenges faced by engineers in their day-to-day -day work. Water flow occurs in the ground any time there is a difference in total head between two locations. The following engineering application shows where this can occur. If we construct a deep basement at a site having a high water table, it is necessary to temporarily, or maybe permanently, lower the water table to facilitate the construction. This is accomplished by installing a series of well points around the perimeter of the basement to pump and lower the water table below the basement floor. Another example where water flow occurs is beneath the dam. In this case, there is a total head of H between points A and B. This causes water to flow from the upstream side, beneath the dam, to emerge along the downstream side. Note that the water is flowing downwards here, while the flow is upwards on the downstream side. What is the effect of both flows on the soil grains? Well, let's see. As water flows downwards, it creates a frictional drag on the soil particles. This adds to the gravitational force of each grain, and hence we might intuitively conclude that the soil grain-to-grain -grain friction, or effect of stress, also increases. We can show mathematically that this is the case. Consider the following experiment. When both containers are at the same level, we find the effect of stress at xx is obtained by subtracting the pore water pressure, gamma w times h plus z, from the total stress, gamma saturated times z plus gamma w times h. Multiplying through, this gives us the saturated unit weight times z plus gamma w times h minus gamma w times h minus gamma w times z. These cancel and leave us with an effective stress of gamma saturated minus gamma w times z, which is simply the submerged unit weight times z. Note that this is the hydrostatic condition as no water flow occurs. Now, if we raise the reservoir by a height h, it creates a difference in total head between the two containers and water starts to flow upwards through the soil. This will continue to occur at a steady rate once the difference in head is maintained. Recalculating the effect of stress at xx gives us the total stress of gamma saturated times z plus gamma w times h, no change here, minus the pore water pressure gamma w times z plus large h plus small h. Multiplying through, these cancel and we're left with the effective stress at xx is equal to the submerged unit weight times z minus gamma w times small h or the effective stress has been reduced by an amount equal to gamma w times small h due to the upward flow. Pondering this for a moment, we can contemplate the reservoir being lifted to such a height that the upward flow may create sufficient drag on the particles to cancel out their gravitational effects. If this was to occur, the effect of stress at xx would equal to zero and the soil would have no strength. Let's calculate the height or h grit required for this to occur. Setting the effect of stress at xx equal to zero, we get the submerged unit weight times z minus the unit weight of water times h grit is equal to zero, or h grit is equal to the submerged unit weight times z divided by gamma w. Let's call this equation one. Now, we can present the critical height in another way. Remember from our fluid mechanics, we define the hydraulic gradient I as the difference in total head divided by the length over which the water flows. So the critical hydraulic gradient I crit is equal to HCR divided by Z. 
So we can substitute i crit times z for h crit in equation 1, giving us i crit times z is equal to the submerged unit weight times z divided by the unit weight of water. The z's cancel, leaving us with the critical hydraulic gradient or the flow at which the soil will lose its strength. We'll call this equation 2. When this occurs, the soil appears to boil as the upward flow literally carries the soil particles in suspension. This is referred to as the quick condition and hence the term quicksand. Here's a question. Do you think it's possible to sink in quicksand, like the bad guys in Tarzan? Hmm, I wonder. Oh, and there's one final thing on upward flow. Recall from our soil properties video. We showed that the submerged unit weight was equal to GS minus 1 times the unit weight of water divided by 1 plus E. Well, we can now use this to substitute into equation 2. This shows us that the critical hydraulic gradient is related only to two soil properties. GS and E. There's an important lesson here for the engineer. We know that GS is a constant for a given soil and E, the voids ratio, is a measure of the soil's compactness or density. So with E being in the denominator, the smaller its value, the greater the hydraulic gradient required for the soil to lose its strength. This is one reason why it's necessary to compact soil during construction. Well, we're now experts on upward flow. What happens when the flow is downward? That is, when the reservoir is lowered as shown. We knew intuitively in our experiment that the upward flow led to a reduction in effective stress, which we found to be equal to gamma w times h. So we can argue that lowering the reservoir in the experiment by an amount h will result in an increase in effective stress and that we can show mathematically that this is equal to plus gamma w times h. One price we pay for this is that the soil settles as the moving water drags the grains into a denser configuration. It's important to remember this when lowering the water table for basement construction because any building close to the site is vulnerable to settlement and damage as a result. Click here to continue with the next video.